Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Fankit. This is part 20 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about displaying appropriate status messages depending on the success of update. If the update fails, then we want to leave that row in edit mode. Please watch part 19 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial before proceeding with this video because this video is continuation to part 19. Now, if there are no concurrency conflicts, and if the update succeeds, then we want to display successful status message as you can see on the slide. Row with employee ID is equal to 1 is successfully updated. On the other hand, if there are data conflicts and if the update fails, then we want to display failure status message as you can see in the slide. Row with employee ID is equal to 1 is not updated due to data conflict. And at the same time, we also want to retain this row in edit mode. Let's see how to achieve this. If you remember, Grid View Control supports an event called Row Updated Event. So if we go to the properties and click on that events icon, so this Row Updated Event, when is this event fired? This event is fired after the update operation. So let's double click this to generate the event handler. And if you notice this event handler method, this event handler method receives an object of type Grid View Updated Event Arguments. This object has got a property called Affected Rows, which is of type Integer. So this property is going to contain the number of rows that were updated. Okay, So we can make use of this property to determine if a row has been successfully updated or not. And just to see, speed things up, I have this already typed, so let me copy and paste that code here. Now first, let's get rid of that compilation error because label message is not there on our web form. So let's drag and drop that on the web form. And we use that label to display the status messages. So let me drag and drop that. We don't want any default text to be displayed. So let's get rid of the text property. And I want to set font hyphen bold is equal to true. And finally, set the ID property to LBL message. So that should have got rid of the compilation errors. OK, so what are we doing here? We are checking if affected rows is less than 1. If it's less than one, then we know for sure no row has been updated, in which case we want to leave that row in edit mode. So how do we do that? It's very simple. It's just one line of code. This object has got a property, keep in edit mode, which is of type Boolean, as you can say. OK, so we are setting that property to true, keep in edit mode. So obviously, this line here is going to retain that row in edit mode. And then after that, we want to display this error message. Row with employee ID is equal to 1 is not updated due to data conflict. OK, so how do we do that? So obviously, this is hard-coded text. And we need to retrieve employee ID. And we do that using keys property of this grid view updated event documents object. A key can also be a composite key. But in our case, it's not a composite key. It's a single key. So we are using an index of 0 on that keys collection to retrieve that employee ID column value. And then we are converting that to string and concatenating that with the rest of the message. And finally, we are setting the full color of that label to red. On the other hand, if the affected rows is not less than 1, then we know for sure a row has been updated, in which case we want to display a success message. And that's what we are doing here. Row with employee ID is equal to, we retrieve the employee ID, concatenate that with the rest of the message, and then finally set the full color of the label to navy. That's it. Now, you might think this may work as expected, but it doesn't work with object data source control as expected. A lot of people has actually asked me if this control, you know, the data source control is a SQL data source control on our web form, then this code would have worked as expected. But since this is an object data source control, this property will always be minus one. If you want this to work correctly as expected, there are certain other things that we need to do before we can actually use this property. In fact, let's put in a breakpoint here. OK, now let's try to edit. At the moment, look at this. The name is Mark. And then if we go back to the database, select the data, name is Mark for employee with ID is equal to 1. Now, no one has changed this data. So let me try to change this to Mark 1, maybe. And then let me update this. Look at what's going to happen. When I Once I click this, obviously, we will drop into this breakpoint. And look at the property value. Affected rows is minus 1. Now, when is this event raised? This event is raised after the update has been completed. 
okay so now by this time the row would have actually been updated if you look at this mark is now updated to mark one successfully but then here we are checking this affected rows property this is always going to be minus one and because of which it comes here it puts that row in edit mode and then it you know builds this message and you know when I press F5 here so that row is still in edit mode and we get this error message okay in spite of that row has been successfully updated and there was no data conflict so we get a misleading error message here and why is that that is due to this property not having the right value that we expect it to have so how do we correct this problem there are two other steps that we need to do before we can actually make it work as expected okay so what's the first step the first step if you remember you know the update is actually done by this update employee method which is present in employee data access layer and if you remember this update employee method has got a void return type okay so the first thing is I want to change that to int first of all let's get this out of debug mode so debug detach all let's close this now and let's change this return type to integer okay and then obviously if you remember this update employee method actually executes this execute non query method of the command object and if you look at the IntelliSense this execute non query method is actually returning an integer back so what's that integer if you remember this execute non query method is actually going to execute this update query so when we execute this update query it's going to return us you know the number of rows that were updated okay and that number is now being returned by this method execute non query and we want to return that integer back to whoever is going to call this update employee method so we are returning this integer that is returned by execute non query and the return type of our update employee method is also an integer okay so that's the first step and which we have just done and what's our next step the next step is to basically use the updated event of object data source one control now look at this when we actually run this okay and when we click this edit button okay uh, and then when we click the update button so I click edit and then I change it to whatever I want and when I click update button okay now to this grid view control the data is being served by object data source control so obviously when I click update you know the object data source controls update method will be executed so what is the update method of this object data source control there is this update employee method and if you look at this update employee method what it is doing it is actually returning you know after it updates the employee record it is returning the number of rows that it, that has been affected okay and then what we need to do basically is this update employee method after it is successfully executed this object data source control has got an event updated event okay so when is this event fired this event is fired after the update operation has been completed so we need to make use of this event and then this event handler method receives an object okay object data source status event arguments object and this object has got a property return value so this return value is going to return the value that is being returned by this update employee method so if this update employee method updates a row then it's going to return one if it doesn't update any row then it it's maybe going to return zero okay so depending on what this update employee method returns okay so that value we can retrieve using this return value property okay and look at this this return values data type is object and that makes sense because the update method can return anything it can return a string integer you know it can return any type okay but we know that we are expecting an integer back so what I'm gonna do just to speed things up I'm gonna copy this code and paste it right there so this is our second step so if e dot return value is integer because we know we are expecting an integer so we are checking if it is really an integer and if it is an integer then we are typecasting that to be of type integer and we are checking is that value greater than zero okay if that is the case then we know for sure a row has been affected so in which case we are setting e dot affected rows is equal to whatever is being returned so that's our second step and final step is basically to use the row updated property so we are initializing this affected rows property and then we can use that as expected so let me go ahead and run this 
okay so just to clarify everything you know there are three simple steps first update employee method gets executed and this method returns an integer value indicating the number of rows affected okay then update event of object data source one control is invoked in this event handler method we are retrieving the value that is returned by the update employee method okay and then we are using that value to initialize affected rows property which then will be used in row updated event of grid view one control so pretty simple and straightforward let's see now if it works as expected so at the moment name is mark one I'm going to change it back to mark and then let's update that look at that row with employee ID is equal to one is successfully updated let's go back and check our data so it's mark now let's change it to maybe to mark two or mark one and then somebody else is actually changing it to mark three even before I have hit that update button so at the moment it's mark three to its latest value but I'm trying to update it to mark one let's see what happens when I click update look at that I get that message row with employee ID is equal to one is not updated due to data conflict and the grid is, is refreshed with the latest data now if I want to change it to mark four I can do that successfully alright so this is now working as expected on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.